This sets the tone for what's to come. Now, this is how you do a runway. I do say awful look because we know it is very awful. It's got everything going on. You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am that coming for your spot. Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. Hello, my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. If you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Y'all, today we are getting into Canada's Drag Race, Canada vs. The World Season 2. That is right, the season just started and Episode 1 just aired. So this is our first chance to get a look at the nine new queens. So, it is time to play my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Canada vs. The World Season 2, Episode 1, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know which looks had my fab and drab of the week. This week, oh, we are getting not one, but two looks. We are getting their entrance look and we are getting their runway look. And this week's runway theme is Wonders of the World, where the queens must give us their best drag. Before you even get into this episode, I need to make a little bit of a comment. Having the idea of best drag as the first runway seems a little bizarro to me. Personally, I like having your best drag at the end of the runway because if you're gonna show your best drag on episode one, it's all downhill from here. But let's get into this episode where I will give you all my thoughts on all of these looks and tell you who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Alexis Mateo and Alexis Mateo is coming out dressed as a bride. That is right, you know what they say, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. And since this is Alexis Mateo's third time competing, she wants to be that bride. So she is coming down in that bridal look. She's coming down wearing this uh, sparkly white gown with these mesh cutouts on it. She then paired it with a white veil and a bouquet of flowers to give you the full bride fantasy. But this isn't any ordinary bride. This is a drag queen bride and she definitely took it up a level. When you think of traditional bridal attire, you think of lace, you think of elegance, but Alexis Mateo is giving you sequins, sparkles, and all of the Vegas to give you that Vegas wedding, to give you that Vegas girl that she is. So she is taking this idea of a wedding it but making it more drag and making it more her. I think this is such a strong start. Not only a strong start, not only a strong start for Alexis, but a strong start for the entire episode and the entire season. This sets the tone for what's to come. This whole look looks really well put together and really thought through. And normally bridal is kind of like, I've seen it, but I love this concept because it is her third time competing. So I love that she's put it into this little twist and making it more Vegas. All in all, I love this look and it is definitely gonna be a Bob. And for her best drag look, Alexis Mateo is coming out in this purple aubergine dress with this silver rhinestone detailing all over it. The dress also has these arm pieces that have feathers on them and feathers all along the bottom. She's then paired it with this giant headpiece with more feathers on top of it. And girl, does this look expensive. But wait, we are not done because as she gets to the end of the runway, she lifts up her dress to reveal a giant showpiece of feathers to kind of make an even bigger statement than she already did. Mama, now this is how you do a runway. When they said best drag look, I was worried that some people were not gonna be showing their best drag, but I couldn't believe that this is Alexis's best drag. It's definitely giving you Vegas showgirl, and if you know Alexis, you know she works in Vegas now, so this is definitely like the new evolution of Alexis because we wouldn't have seen her do something like this on previous seasons, but now she is Vegas through and through, and it is shining through her drag. This dress honestly was beautiful as soon as it came out. I almost felt like it didn't need that showpiece on the back, but honestly, the showpiece on the back is amazing in itself as well, so I really can't critique it. All in all, this is elegant, this is expensive looking, and definitely feels like best drag, and definitely gonna get a bow. Next up, we have Cheryl Hall, or as I should now say, Cheryl. She is coming out uh, wearing uh, this uh, blue little uh, dress with this uh, blue train and this big blonde hair. As she walks out, I'm thinking to myself, 
oh, well, Cheryl is known for being a mediocre queen, so it's no surprise that she's coming out wearing a mediocre dress. I was dying when Alexis said that in the confessionals because honestly, I was thinking the exact same thing. I think that for an entrance looks, this was quite basic. I was expecting so much more because Cheryl has so much to prove. She's always said that she is more than a mediocre queen and she never really got to show that side of her. On her original season of UK, she was still a little bit of a newbie. And then on UK versus the world one, she didn't really get to show everything that she had because she got kicked out so early. So I was expecting her to come out with like a bang and she kind of didn't. This feels like a nice, simple dress. It is not anything va 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 boom. It definitely does not scream like, look at me entrance look. At the same time, it is the entrance look and they are not getting judged on the entrance look. So I understand uh, going a little bit simpler on this one and maybe taking something from your closet because that's what this feels like. This feels like a dress she had in her closet that she used for some event that she's now used again for this entrance look. And if it isn't that and she got this commission, then girl, I have some fears about what's gonna happen this season. Overall, this is an okay look. And for your third time competing, I am expecting a lot more than just okay. And that is why she's getting a drab. And for her very best drag, Cheryl is coming out with this a white dress with this feathers all around the bottom and feathers all around the top. She then paired it with tall quafted hair in this white color, giving you the full white from head to toe. Now, Cheryl was known as a mediocre queen, but girl, this is not mediocre. I am so glad that she came out with this look because she had something to prove, mostly to herself, to be honest, and she showed out like there is no tomorrow. I love this dress. It feels super, super elegant, and it is definitely cinched to show her body. I also love that this is making a statement without a single piece of rhinestone on it, but this looks amazing as it is. The only thing that's missing for me to take it from a amazing score to a perfect score is the hair. I love this hair, but I wish there was some rhinestones in it. I wish some of the swirls had the rhinestones in it, almost like what Lemon had. I think that would have really just completed the look. But all in all, this is really, really well done and definitely going to be a bop. Next up, we have Tainomi Banks. And Tainomi Banks, for her entrance look, is coming out with this orange sequence catsuit, with this orange frilly robe on top of her, with this sort of uh, ruffled hair. Now, I love the bold choice of an orange. Orange is not necessarily a common color that a lot of queens choose. And I think that orange looks really good on Tainomi. But as she walks out, I'm a little bit disappointed. Aww. I say this because uh, I've been excited to see Tainomi come back. And then on her promo look, she had done this really amazing, cool conceptual look, which definitely showed me an elevation of Tainomi's style. If you want to hear what I said about her promo look, go ahead and check the link below. But when she came out with this look, I felt like she, we were getting the old Tainomi, not the new Tainomi I saw in her promo look. And therefore I was like, ooh, this is okay. I wasn't oh, very wowed by it and that's kind of what I was hoping. She's got this sequence bodysuit underneath and a sequence bodysuit like that is actually quite expensive even though it looks quite simple, but it looks like a dance costume. It looks like something that she probably had made for all of her bar gigs because she is a dancer. I love this little frilly coat on top of it. I think that the frilly coat is really interesting. It's definitely giving me a little bit of those like night robe vibes, but then it's got this really cool print on the back, which kind of takes it into a different level. I just don't know if these two elements go together. I get the idea of keeping a slim figure in the middle and then having something a little bit bulkier on the ends, but I feel like there needed to be a little bit of contrast to create a little bit more shape between them. And then she decided to pair it with this hair. Now I totally get why she chose this hair because the frills in the hair match the frills in the jacket. So actually it's a really intelligent hair. I just think that Tainomi needs bigger hair because right now her head looks really tiny comparative to her body. And I actually think that this hair really works had it been like two times the size, give you more of that drag theater. All in all, it's an okay look, not my favorite, but also not the worst. So I'm gonna give her a soft fab.
And for her very best drag a look, Tainomi Banks is coming out in this a chocolate top with this sort of like caramel uh, bottom a dress. She then paired it with this really avant-garde swifted hair with what I think are pheasant feathers coming off of her. Now, I don't know what kind of bird uh, this is for these feathers, but I've definitely seen Envy Peru wear these. And if Envy Peru is wearing them, you know they are expensive. Actually, I think these are probably more expensive than ostrich feather. So you, she is definitely saying, you want a very best drag? I am gonna show you very best drag. And that is exactly what Tainomi Banks is doing here. I love the tone on tone of the colors, but I also like the mix of fabrics and the mix of tonalities overall. It's got a little bit of the lighter browns, a little bit of the darker browns, a little bit of the lace, a little bit of the feathers, a little bit of the rhinestones, a little bit of the silk. It's got everything going on, but still feels like very put together, very elegant and very demure, which I am really loving. Sometimes you can go over the top when you do too much, but this definitely doesn't feel over the top. It definitely feels perfect. Ultimately, I'm super excited because this is what I was hoping Tainomi Banks would turn out and she is doing it already on episode one. So if you hadn't guessed, it is definitely gonna be a oh. Next up, we have Le Phil, and Le Phil, for her entrance look, is coming out. she got this dress that looks like tape wrapped all around her that says fragile and airmail, and then she's paired it with this red, white, and blue pointing a boa with red, white, and blue balloons in her hair. First, let's talk about this dress. I love this dress. She's definitely going for this like airmail sort of vibe. It definitely looks like it's made from duct tape, but done in a very high-end elegant way because it's got all of the rhinestones all over it. Uh, on top of it, it sits really nicely on her to give her like a figure. So although it looks like tape, you know it is not tape. It actually looks like it is well thought through and constructed. I even like this boa with it because I think that a boa can sometimes feel a little bit like overdone, but because this one's got little pointy pieces to it, it definitely feels like an envelope and definitely suits this dress. I think it is really cool conceptually how these two stick together. But again, I'm not surprised because Le Phil is very much a conceptual queen. They really like to take things to a different dimension and bring you different things into their drag. And I really appreciate that when Le Phil was on Drag Race UK, I was really disappointed when they got kicked out because I was expecting them to go a lot further because their looks were just so interesting and so unique. So I'm so glad to see them back on this season. Now, as we continue to look all the way up, we get to the hair and girl, I have no idea what's going on with this hair. This hair is all tied up in balloons and this is where y'all lost me. Clearly this probably has something to do with the concept or has something to be uh, conceptual about it, but I just don't think it's very elegant. I feel the hair just looks messy and I just don't get the balloons. Balloons at the end of the day are always just balloons. They're nothing special about these balloons. I wish uh, they had done this with other just normal type of hair wig maybe with some envelopes or something in it uh, just to complete the look. I think that would have just really been better than whatever is going on here. But you know what? At least they made a statement on the runway, which is more than what can be said about the previous two queens. All in all, despite not understanding the hair and actually not really liking the hair, I think the overall look still works even with that awful hair. And that just goes to show the power of this, this gown. And that is why they are still getting a... And for their very best drag, Le Phil is coming out wearing this red and gold uh, attire with these uh, giant shoulder pieces with these sort of white and black eyes into them. They go on to explain for their very best drag, they are giving their very best drag on. And I love this. I didn't originally see the dragon when they came out, but as soon as they said it, I was like, mama, this works. This feels like those dragons you see at Lunar New Year, uh, but then made it fashion. And I love this because Le Phil is very much a conceptual queen. And so she is bringing concept to this runway. Again, I always say that sometimes people think very best drag and they think they need to do some glamorous dress and the fill is showing that you definitely don't. You can do something a little bit more conceptual and it still feel elegant, rich, and definitely very best drag. I love this look. I love the cultural interpretation of it. I love that they didn't go stereotypical. I love the whole look overall and this is definitely going to be a... Ah! 
up, we have Kennedy Davenport and Kennedy Davenport for her entrance look is coming out in this floral jumpsuit. When she turns the corner, you think that it is a dress, but as she starts to walk, you realize, no, it is actually a jumpsuit and it's got frilly bell-bottom pants. She then paired it with this big hat in the same pattern. Now, first up, I'm gonna say I do appreciate that she matched the pattern on the garment to the pattern on the hat because it definitely feels like a cohesive look. The other thing that I really like is the size of this pattern. Sometimes people tend to do really small patterns and when you do small patterns, sometimes they're like not noticeable, especially not on a stage or on a camera. And here it really stands out and really gives you that floral pattern, which you definitely need on a stage like this. The thing is, is I don't really love this dress. I think that it feels very much like a church lady vibe, not the Kennedy Davenport that I know from like the Vegas review. So personally, as I've said before, I wasn't necessarily a huge Kennedy fan on her original season, but then I started watching uh, Drag Race Live, the Vegas review, and I fell in love with Kennedy. So I was actually quite excited to see her on this season, but I was expecting to see the full glam version of Kennedy that I've known, the pageant one. So when she came out as this, as a first look, I was like, girl, really? You were known as a pageant queen. I was expecting you to be full on pageant. But no, she decided to go church lady. Girl, this is not it. I could sit here and discuss why I like it and don't like it, but at the end of the day, I just don't like it. Could this have been better? Yes, it can. Personally, I think had some of the pieces been 3D and not just a print, I think that would have really helped. I think had she rhinestoned every single flower to make it like really, really heavy rhinestone, almost like what Gomic did for her art runway, that would have gone a long way to take this more basic outfit and really elevate it with just a shit ton of rhinestones. All in all, this is a little bit lack luster to me and that is why I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drab. And for her best drag look, Kennedy Davenport is coming out in this pink and mesh sequence dress. She's got rhinestones all over it and she's got this giant feather headpiece coming off of her breast and landing on her shoulder and she's then paired this with tall black hair. Now this is what I was expecting to see from Kennedy from her entrance look because this is definitely giving me old school pageant vibes but done in a very elegant way. This is definitely screaming Kennedy Davenport. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if she already had this in her wardrobe and she just pulled it out for this because she does so many pageants that this feels like something that she would already own. And if she doesn't already own it, she probably got it made by all of her pageant people. But this is definitely, definitely great drag. The only thing that I will say is that this is really feeling like old school pageant and not new school pageant, which is not necessarily a problem. I feel like a lot of old school drag definitely gets overlooked and I'm definitely not going to be one of those queens. But when you see this against someone like Alexis Mateo, that's when you start to see, okay, Okay, uh, Alexis Mateo took this Vegas pageant idea and taking it over the top while Kennedy stayed at her normal level. But the thing is, Kennedy's normal level is a winning pageant queen. All in all, this is a really beautiful dress and Kennedy looks gorgeous in it. And that is why she is definitely gonna get a ah! Next up, we have La Cajena, and La Cajena is coming out in this red sort of ripped frilly dress with these red gloves and this red headband. She then paired it with a black ponytail and a giant nose ring. Now, first up, I will say if you watch Drag Race France or if you follow La Cajena on her social media, then you would know that this sort of giant nose ring is kind of become a little bit of a signature of hers. So I like that she's coming out with her first look wearing this nose ring because because it already shows you, this is my signature, this is who I am, and if you don't know me, now you will. I think that is a great way to brand it because I don't really see that many queens or any queens doing a giant nose ring of this nature. Then we get into the dress, and I think this dress is really interesting. Like, Hannah has a lot to prove, not only because she got kicked out first on Drag Race France, but also because her promo look was questionable at best. Again, if you want to watch my thoughts on the promo look, go ahead and click on the link below where uh, you can watch the whole episode on that. But then she comes out with this dress and I think this dress is actually much better than what she's shown in the past. It definitely feels elevated. I love the frilliness of it. It feels a little bit like ferocious, but in like a good sort of fierce way. Kind of like she came out of battle and she's all ripped up, but done in a more glamorous look. She then paired it with this headband turban thing, which 
is not necessarily my favorite, but again, has become a little bit of Kahana signature. She's definitely done a lot of headband and turban uh, style headpieces. So this makes sense, especially as a first look. The only thing that I will criticize is that I find her makeup very small. I wish she would have went bigger with her makeup, but this is her makeup style. So maybe that's just me. Nevertheless, I think this is a pretty good look and definitely gonna be a fab. And for her best drag look, La Cajena is coming out wearing this sort of like black dress bodysuit with this black train and this black uh, turban. And then she's paired it with this giant rhinestone necklace that is shaped like a scorpion. First up, I will say that I like that a queen went in a different direction. Sometimes when you say best drag, people think that it has to be elegant. And I don't necessarily think that's true. I think that best drag means best drag. Show us your version of your best drag, whether that be punk, whether that be elegant, whatever that might be. So I like that she didn't go pure elegance. That being said, I don't know that she necessarily hit the mark with this one. I think that this dress had a good idea behind it, but it just really missed on execution. She goes on to explain that her name is La Cajena and La Cajena is named after a real queen of the desert. And so that's what she was trying to channel. I didn't get that. If this was supposed to give me queen of the desert vibes, I definitely was expecting a lot more of it. I definitely didn't get any desert from it except for the scorpion. Speaking of the scorpion, the scorpion is the best part of this dress. I love this rhyme rhinestone scorpion and I love the rhinestone scorpion in contrast to this black matte dress. It really creates that juxtaposition. I just wish it was more of a focal. Had this dress been made sort of in leather, it definitely would have given me more of those desert vibes and had this scorpion been put like smack in the middle of the dress to kind of give you like this emblem, like the S of Superman, but like this scorpion queen uh, vibe, I think that would have really worked. Then we get to the headpiece, which she decided to go with a turban, which is definitely her style which I actually don't mind I just wish that there was like a jewel on the middle of the headdress to kind of give you more of that queen vibe as opposed to, the, to like a typical turban then she decided to use this sort of mesh material at the back I think this works because it created a little bit of uh, differentiation of textures in the dress itself all in all I felt like it was trying to get somewhere but definitely didn't get there personally I actually liked her entrance look better than I liked this look and this is supposed to be her best drag look that goes to show you how much she missed the theme. With that said, I guess it goes to no surprise that I am gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Fierce Alicious. And Fierce Alicious for her entrance look is coming out with this little blue dress with these red pom-poms on the side of her and this wet blue and blonde wig. If you're thinking to yourself, this look looks very familiar, that's because you probably watched Canada's Drag Race where this is actually the dress she made for her sewing challenge. Now, if you recall on the sewing challenge, she was a struggle bus. The challenge at the time was to take your original look and remake a new look out of your old look. She definitely did not want to touch her really expensive look, so she did stuff with like the lining and a piece of it to come up with this awful look. And yes, I do say awful look because we know it is very awful. She even knew it was bad, but she made it past that first episode to become a very iconic and memeable queen. So I think that is exactly what she's doing with this dress. This dress is so bad that uh, she wants to make it iconic. I've seen her use this dress on tour. She's really making it into a moment taking something that was sort of like bad at the moment and trying to flip it on its head almost like what Monet exchange did with the sponge dress but making her own twist on it and you kind of have to love fierce alicious for this because she will create a tv moment and that is exactly what she is doing with this dress creating tv you know that people are going to talk about it and say that it's awful and guess what i am one of those people she's definitely using this moment to extend her five minutes of fame and i really appreciate it i think this is so in intelligent from a television moment that I can't really hate it. But if we are talking about fashion and a good fashion, this ain't good fashion. It's actually really bad. I think had she wanted to do this look, I would have just remade it. Basically taking this exact same idea, giving it to a designer to remake a a better version of it, like a better well-made dress with a little bit more integrated and a little bit different hair to kind of be like, oh, remember that struggle bus dress? 
here it is in the envisioned way that I had envisioned it. I think I would have appreciated that a little bit better instead of coming out with the exact same struggle bus dress. All that said, if you hadn't guessed already, this is definitely going to be a drab. And for her very best drag, uh, Fierce Alicious is coming out with this blue uh, latex uh, dress with these red flowers that are sort of growing all around it. And she's paired it with this blue veil. I guess you can call it. Fierce goes on to explain that this is a reinterpretation of her prolapse dress, the one that she used for her entrance look, and reversing it into this prolapse gown. If you know any of the inner workings of Drag Race, they tell you to prepare certain looks, but they don't tell you when those looks are going to be shown on the runway. So I definitely don't think that many of the queens thought that very best drag would be the first runway. But I feel like this worked out in Fierce Alicia's favor. First up, as her entrance look, she comes out with this basic prolapse dress dress, the one that was trash, and then she comes back and turns this out as her final dress. I think that she thought this was going to be her finale dress, which also would have worked because they would have shown the transformation for this dress. And I love this dress. It feels like a blue dress with flowers growing up on top of her. This blue veil gives me a little bit of Mother Mary vibes, but done in a very drag way. And more importantly than all, Fierce Alicious looks Fierce. This is an amazing dress and an amazing interpretation and definitely going to be a bow. Next up, we have Eureka, and Eureka for her entrance look is coming out in this red femme fatale look. She's coming out wearing this red sequined jacket with these red boots and this red hat. As she gets to the end of the runway, she rips open her jacket to reveal this red lingerie. Eureka is really coming out with a bang. She is showing you what she's got. Eureka is one of those queens that's been in the business for quite some time, so I was expecting a big things from her, and big things did she deliver. First up, coming out wearing lingerie as a big girl is a statement. It shouldn't be, but it definitely is. It goes to say, it doesn't matter what size you are, you could still be sexy AF, and that is what Eureka is delivering. She comes out with this jacket, and it's a little bit demure, a little bit femme fatale, a little bit like seductiveness, and then when she reveals the lingerie, it's like, ooh baby, here is the lust, here is the love, here is the sex that you know you want. And I love this statement. Overall, both pieces are really well made, both the lingerie and the jacket. They all match together. It all feels like a cohesive look from hat to boot to dress. And I really just don't have that big of a critique. And because I don't have that big of a critique, it is definitely going to be a fab. And for her runway look, Eureka is coming out wearing these giant pink sleeves that cover her whole body with this giant crown coming out of it. She goes on to explain that she is embodying the Elephant Queen. Now, for those of you who do not know, she often calls herself the Elephant Queen, so she is playing up on her branding. She explains that these are two heart-shaped sleeves that make the shape of a heart-shaped elephant. Uh, as she walks down the runway, she lifts her sleeve to reveal the outfit underneath, which is this uh, pink uh, bodysuit with this frilly number. Oof. I don't know about this one. Clearly this was an expensive outfit because it definitely looks expensive. I just don't know that it's necessarily stylish. When she comes out, when you can just see the pink sleeves and this giant crown, I got Princess Peach vibes because it was definitely giving me a little bit of that like cartoon vibes because it is definitely such a big crown, but I didn't mind that. When she explained the concept of Elephant Queen, I actually had to like stare at it a few times to actually even see the elephant. So I was like, this is a little bit of a miss. And she's done Elephant Queen looks in the past that I think were more successful than this one. When she lifts up her sleeves and she reveals to the bodysuit, I was yet again even more disappointed. First up, it's just a bodysuit. I was expecting a little bit more to come out of it. I was expecting a little bit more of a reveal. I was expecting like she lifts her sleeve and then this would have turned into a giant gown. I think that would have looked really nice, a giant pink gown. I think the colors of the bodysuit are really nice. I like the frills of the bodysuit, but it's just not really doing anything to me. She goes on to explain that she's decided not to wear any hips or tits because she wants to uh, show off her trans body and I get that. I get like loving yourself and I get that she's going through a new phase of her transition so she wants to embrace herself. That being said, when it comes to a drag look, I would have liked to see this with hips and tits. I think that would have helped take this bodysuit a little bit better because Eureka is really good at padding and really good at shaping herself. So I felt like this let her down just a little bit. All in all, it is not my favorite outfit and that is why I'm going to go ahead and give it a Drown. 
And finally, we have Lemon. And Lemon for her entrance look is coming out in her signature yellow color. She's coming out wearing a corseted ball gown with frilly bottoms and this sculpted top piece. Now, I am actually having trouble explaining it because it is so cool and original and definitely giving you that it factor that I was missing with some of these queens. Uh, she's coming out saying, I am here to compete and I am here to compete for the third time, but this time I am not going out first. I love this dress. I think that the frills work and definitely gives you movement. It definitely feels regal. I like that there's multiple shades of yellow into it so it doesn't feel so flat. I like that it's got this corseted top so it definitely gives you a little bit of figure. I love this sculptural element on her shoulder to give you a little bit more of that avant-garde nature. I love that it's got all these rhinestones on it to give you this sort of drag excellence and dragginess that we definitely want and need. The one thing that I'm not loving is the hair. I don't like a flat wig and I'm sure that this is probably like human hair wig, hence why it is a flat wig. I think an updo with this dress would have worked really well and taken it up an extra notch. But when it does come to flat hair, this is not the worst one I've seen. Sometimes flat hair looks really cheap and synthetic. This definitely does not. So I at least appreciate that she, if she is gonna go flat, she is gonna go with high quality, which this at least looks like it is. That being said, the only thing I can critique is the hair because the rest of it is excellent. And because the hair is the only thing I can critique, I'm still gonna go ahead and give her a major bow. And for her best drag look, Lemon is coming out wearing this corseted a rhinestone uh, bodice top with these rhinestone gloves and this big frilly A-line dress. She then paired it with this quaffed a blonde hair with more rhinestones in it and rhinestone sunglasses. Girl, this is how you do drag. I love this look. It's definitely glittery and draggy as soon as it comes out and it definitely screams lemon with her signature yellow color. I think that this is definitely feeling elegant but also a different shape. Usually people do gowns that are all the way to the floor or when they do do these A-line style dresses, they definitely keep them smaller but she decided to go bigger and I think that that's exactly what you need in drag. You need to like exaggerate those proportions to make it more fun and frilly and not so like natural woman. And that is exactly what Lemon is doing here. I love the entire dress. Now we get into the hair. I think this hair is really beautiful. And this is actually the type of hair that I had wished I had seen on her entrance look because had she done her entrance look with this hair, it definitely would have taken it up an extra notch. I think that in this outfit, I think the hair is missing a little bit of yellow. I know me saying that she needs more yellow. That is kind of insane, but I love the hair. I love the style of the hair. I get why she went with white because it's got this white piece in the middle that then transitions to the top of the white hair. I think it all works. I just wish that like for example had all the rhinestones in her hair been yellow Then it would have picked up the yellow rhinestones from her body and really connected the two So it would have went from full yellow at the bottom to transition to more and more white right now I just feel like it is just too white everything else about this dress is excellent fantastic and amazing and definitely gonna be a bow. And that is it for the first episode. Girl, I am so excited because this first episode was excellent. I was a little bit questioning uh, the entrance looks because the entrance looks were a little bit disappointing, but then they came in with the runway looks and the runway looks were amazing. I gave so many five stars that it was really hard to choose my best and worst looks of the week. Speaking of best and worst looks of the week, uh, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fab and drab of the week. Well, my drab of the week for the entrance look goes to Fierce Delicious. And for the a runway look, it goes to La Tahena. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fabs of the week? Well, my fab of the week for the entrance look goes to Lemon. And for the runway look, I am giving it to Fierce Delicious. I know that last one was a little bit maybe controversial, but I chose Fierce Delicious because I gave multiple five stars to Queens, but Fierce Delicious is the one dress that I would want to wear because it is definitely feeling a little bit edgy and a little bit cool and a little bit referential. But y'all, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree with my comments, my thoughts, and my fabs and traps of the week? Well, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know who you think had the best looks because I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neil Noir at Mithion Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.